Milton, read by Adriana Díaz Enciso, part 3. And every natural defect has a spiritual cause, and not a natural. For a natural cause only seems, it is a delusion of Uro, and a ratio of the perishing vegetable memory. But the wine press of loaf is eastward of Golgonusa, before the seat of Satan. Luva lay the foundations and Eurysen finished it in howling woe. How read the sons and daughters of Luva! Here they tread the grapes, laughing and shouting, drunk with odors, many fall oil weary. Drowned in the wine is many a youth and maiden. Those around lay them on skins of tigers and on the spotted leopard and the wild ass till they revive, or bury them in cool grots, making lamentation. This wine press is called War on Earth. It is the printing press of Lowe's, and here he lays his worlds in order above the mortal brain, as cocks are formed in a wheel to turn the cocks of the adverse wheel. Timbres and violins sport around the wine presses, the little seed, the sportive root, the earth womb, the gold beetle, the wise emmet, dance round the wine presses of Luva. The centipede is there, the ground spider with many eyes, the mole clothed in velvet, the ambitious spider in his sullen web, the lucky golden spinner, the ear with arms the tender maggot emblem of immortality, the flea, louse, duck, the tapeworm, all the armies of disease, visible or invisible to the slothful vegetating man, the slow slug, the grasshopper that sings and laughs and drinks. Winter comes, he folds his slender bones without a murmur. The cruel scorpion is there, the gnat, wasp, hornet and the honeybee, the toad and venomous newt, the serpent clothed in gems and gold. They throw off their gorgeous raiment, they rejoice with loud jubilee around the wine presses of Luva, naked and drunk with wine. There is the nettle that stings with soft down, and there the indignant thistle whose bitterness is bred in his milk, who feels on contempt of his neighbor. There all the idle wheels that creep around the obscure places show their various limbs, naked in all their beauty, dancing round the wine presses. But in the wine presses the human grapes sing not, nor dance. They howl and writhe in shoals of torment, in fierce flames consuming, in shades of iron and in dungeons circled with ceaseless fires, in pits and dens and shades of death, in shapes of torment and woe. The plates and screws and racks and saws and cores and fires and cisterns, the cruel joys of Luva's daughters lacerating with knives and whips their victims and the deadly sport of Luva's sons. They dance around the dying, and they drink, they howl and groan, they catch the shrieks in cups of gold, they hand them to one another. These are the sports of love, and these the sweet delights of amorous play, tears of the grape, the dead sweat of the cluster, the last sigh of the mild youth who listens to the luring songs of Luba. But Alamanda called on earth commerce, is the cultivated land around the city of Golgonusa, in the forests of Entuthum. Here the sons of those labor against the dead eternal, through all the twenty-seven heavens of Beulah in Uru, seat of Satan, which is the false tongue beneath Beulah. It is the sense of touch. The plow goes forth in tempest and lightnings, and the harrow cruel in blights of the east. The heavy roller follows in howlings of woe. 
The recent sons here labor also, and here are seen the meals of the Ottoman on the verge of the lake of Udan Adam. These are the starry vaults of night at the depths and the caverns of earth. These meals are oceans, clouds and waters ungovernable in their fury. Here are the stars created and the seeds of all things planted, and here the sun and moon receive their fixed destinations. But in eternity the four arts, poetry, painting, music, and architecture, which is science, are the four faces of man. Not so in time and space. There three are shut out, and only science remains through mercy. And by means of science the three become apparent in time and space, in the three professions, poetry in religion, music, law, painting in physic and surgery, that man may live upon earth till the time of his awakening, and from these three science derives every occupation of men, and science is divided into Bola Hula and Alamanda. Some sons of law surround the passions with portions of iron and silver, creating form and beauty around the dark regions of sorrow, giving to air in nothing a name and habitation delightful, with bounds to the infinite, putting off the indefinite into most holy forms of thought. Such is the power of inspiration. They labor incessant with many tears and afflictions, creating the beautiful house for the piteous sufferer. Others, cabinets richly fabricated of gold and ivory, for doubts and fears unformed and wretched and melancholy, the little weeping spectre stands at the threshold of death eternal, and sometimes two spectres like lamps quivering and often malignant they combat, heart-breaking, sorrowful and piteous. Antamon takes them into his beautiful, flexible hands, as the sower takes the seed, or as the artist his clay or fine wax, to mouth artful a model for golden ornaments. The soft hands of Antamon draw the indelible line, form immortal with golden pen, such as the spectre admiring puts on the sweet form, then smiles Antamon bright through his windows, the daughters of beauty look up from their lumen prepared in tegument soft for its clothing with joy and delight. But Theotormon and Sofa stand in the gate of Luvan, anxious. Their numbers are seven million and seven thousand and seven hundred. They contend with the weak spectres. They fabricate soothing forms. The spectre refuses. He seeks cruelty. They create the crested cock. Terrified, the spectre screams and rushes in fear into their net of kindness and compassion, and is born a weeping terror. Or they create a lion and tiger in compassionate thunderings, howling the spectres flee. They take refuge in human lineaments. The sons of Osoth with the optic nerve stand fiery, glowing, and the number of his sons is eight millions and eight. They give delights to the man unknown, artificial riches they give to scorn, and their possessors to trouble and sorrow and care, shutting the sun and moon and stars and trees and clouds and waters and hills out from the optic nerve and hardening it into a bone of pig. And like the black pebble on the enraged fish, while the poor indigent is like the diamond, which the clothing rubbed covering in the mine is open all within, and in his hallowed center holds the heavens of bright eternity. Also here builds walls of rocks against the searching sea, and timbers cramped with iron cramps burying the joys of life from fell destruction in the spectral's cunning or rage. He creates a speckled mute the spider and beetle, the rat and mouse, the badger and fox. They worship before his feet in trembling fear. 
but others of the sons of laws build moments and minutes and hours and days and months and years and ages and periods, wondrous buildings, and every moment has a couch of gold for soft repose. A moment equals a pulsation of the artery. And between every two moments stands a daughter of Piula to feed the sleepers on their couches with maternal care. And every minute has an azure tent with silken veils. And every hour has a bright golden gate carved with skill. And every day and night has walls of brass and gates of adamant, shining like precious stones and ornamented with appropriate signs. And every month a silver paved terrace built it high. And every year invulnerable barriers with high towers. And every age is moated deep with bridges of silver and gold. And every seven ages is encircled with a flaming fire. Now seven ages is amounting to two hundred years. Each has its card, each moment, minute, hour, day, month, and year. All are the work of fairy hands of the four elements. The card are angels of providence and duty evermore. Every time less than a pulsation of the artery is equal in its period and value to six thousand years. For in this period the poet's work is done, and all the great events of time start forth and are conceived in such a period within a moment, a pulsation of the artery. The sky is an immortal tent built by the sons of Lowe's, and every space that a man views around his dwelling place, standing on his own roof or in his garden on a mount of twenty-five cubits in height, such space is his universe, and on its verge the sun rises and sets. The clouds bow to meet the flat earth and the sea in such an ordered space. The starry heavens reach no further, but here bend and set on all sides, and the two poles turn on their valves of gold. And if he move his dwelling place, his heavens also move. Where'er he goes, and all his neighborhood bewail his loss. Such are the spaces called earth, and such its dimension. As to that false appearance which appears to the reason as of a globe rolling through voidness, it is a delusion of Uro. The microscope knows not of this, nor the telescope. They alter the ratio of the spectator's organs, but leave objects untouched. For every space larger than a red globule of man's blood is visionary and is created by the hammer of laws. And every space smaller than a globule of man's blood opens into eternity of which this vegetable earth is but a shadow. The red globule is the unwearied sun by laws created to measure time and space to mortal men. Every morning, Bulahul and Alamanda are placed on each side of that pulsation in that globule. Terrible their power. But Rintra and Palamabrum govern over day and night in Alamanda and Entuthon Benithon where souls wail, where orc incessant howls burning in fires of eternal youth within the vegetated mortal nerves. For every man born is joined within into one mighty polypus, and this polypus is org. But in the optic, vegetative nerves sleep was transformed to dead in old time by Satan, the father of sin and death. And Satan is the specter of org, and org is the generate lover. But in the nerves of the nostrils, Accident being formed into substance and principle, by the cruelties of demonstration it became opaque and indefinite. But the Divine Saviour, formed into a solid by Glossus mathematic power, he named the opaque Satan. He named the solid Adam. And in the nerves of the ear, 
for the nerves of the tongue are closed. On Albion's rock low stands, creating the glorious sun each morning. And when unwearied in the evening he creates the moon, that to the lead, who all in terror at her splendor leaves his prey while loss appoints, and Rintra and Palamaron guide the souls clear from the rock of death, that that himself may wake in his appointed season when the ends of heaven meet. Then Lowes conducts the spirits to be vegetated into great Golgonusa, free from the four iron pillars of Satan's throne, temperance, prudence, justice, fortitude, the four pillars of tyranny, that Satan's watch fins touch them not before they vegetate. But Anitharmon and her daughters take the pleasant charge to keep them to their lovely heavens till the great judgment day. Such is their lovely charge. But Rahab and Tirsa pervert their mild influences. Therefore the seven eyes of God walk round the three heavens of Urwo, where Tirsa and her sisters weave the black hoof of death upon Enchithon Benithon, in the Vale of Surrey, where horror terminates in Grafine. The stamping feet of Selopheha's daughters are covered with a human gore upon the treaders of the loom. They sink to the wing shuttle. The river rises above his banks to wash tools. He takes it in his arms. He passes it in strength through his current. The veil of human miseries is woven over the ocean from the Atlantic to the great South Sea, the Eritrean. Such is the world of Lowe's, the labor of six thousand years. Thus nature is a vision of the science of the Elohim. End of the first book. Milton. Book the second. There is a place where contrarieties are equally true. This place is called Beulah. It is a pleasant, lovely shadow where no dispute can come because of those who sleep. Into this place the sons and daughters of Ololon descended with solemn mourning into Beulah's moony shales and hills, weeping for Milton. Mute wonder held the daughters of Beulah in rapture with affection, sweet and mild benevolence. Beulah is evermore created around eternity, appearing to the inhabitants of Eden, around them on all sides. But Beulah to its inhabitants appears within each district as the beloved infant in his mother's bosom, round and circle, with arms of love and pity and sweet compassion. But to the sons of Eden the moony habitations of Beulah are from great eternity a mild and pleasant rest. And it is thus created. Lo, the eternal great humanity, to whom be glory and dominion evermore, Amen, walks among all his awful family, seen in every face as the breath of the Almighty. Such are the worlds of man to man in the great wars of eternity, in fury of poetic inspiration, to build the universe stupendous, mental forms creating. But the emanations trembled exceedingly, nor could they live, because the life of man was too exceeding unbounded. His joy became terrible to them. They trembled and wept, crying with one voice, Give us a habitation and a place in which we may be hidden under the shadow of wings, for if we, who are but for a time, and who pass away in winter, behold these wonders of eternity, we shall consume. But you, O oh, our fathers and brothers, remain in eternity. But grant us a temporal habitation. Do you speak to us? We will obey your words as you obey Jesus, the Eternal, who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. So spake the lovely emanations, 
and there appeared a pleasant mild shadow above, beneath, and on all sides round. Into this pleasant shadow, old, weak, and weary, like women and children, were taken away, as on wings of dove-like softness, and shadowy habitations prepared for them. But every man returned and went, still going forward through the bosom of the Father, in eternity on eternity. Neither did any lack or fall into error, without a shadow to repose in all the days of happy eternity. Into this pleasant shadow Beulah all, all alone descended, and when the daughters of Beulah heard the lamentation, all Beulah wept, for they saw the Lord coming into the clouds, and the shadow of Beulah terminate in rocky Albion. And all nations wept in affliction, family by family. Germany wept towards France and Italy. England wept and trembled towards America. India rose up from his golden bed, as one awakened in the night. They saw the Lord coming in the clouds of all along with power and great glory. And all the living creatures of the four elements wailed with bitter wailing. These in the aggregate are named Satan and Rahab. They know not of regeneration, but only of generation. The fairies, nymphs, gnomes and genii of the four elements, unforgiving and unalterable. This cannot be regenerated, but must be created, for they know only of generation. These are the gods of the kingdom of the earth, in contrarious and cruel opposition, element against element, opposing war, not mental as the wars of eternity, but a corporeal strife, in those halls continual laboring in the furnaces of Golganusa, Orc howls on the Atlantic, and it Armon trembles, all Beulah weeps. Thou hearest the nightingale begin the song of spring, the lark sitting upon his earthly bed, just as the morn appears, listen silent, and springing from the waving cornfield, loud he leaves the choir of the day, trill, 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 mounting upon the wings of light into the great expanse, re-echoing against the lovely blue and shining heavenly shell. His little throat labors with inspiration. Every feather on throat and breast and wings vibrates with the effluence divine. All nature listens silent to him, and the awful sun stands still upon the mountain, looking on this little bear with eyes of soft humility, and wonder and love and awe. Then loud from their green covert all the bells begin their song, the thrush, the linnet and the goldfinch, robin and the wren awake the sun from his sweet reverie upon the mountain. The nightingale again assays his song, and through the day, and through the night, warbles luxuriant, every bird of song attending his loud harmony with admiration and love. This is a vision of the lamentation of Beulah over Ololon. Thou perceivest the flowers put forth their precious odors, and now can tell how from so small a center comes such sweets forgetting that within that center eternity expands its ever-during doors, that organ anak feels ligard. First ere the morning breaks joy, opens in the flowery bosoms, joy even to tears, which the sun rising dries. First the wild thyme and meadow sweet downy and soft waving among the reels, light springing on the air lead this sweet dance, they wake the honeysuckles leaping on the oak. The flaunting beauty revels along upon the wind. The white thorn lovely may opens her many lovely eyes. Listening, the rose still sleeps, none there to wake her. Soon she bears her crimson curtain bed and comes forth in the majesty of beauty. 
every flower, the pink, the jessamine, the wallflower, the carnation, the jonquil, the mild lily opes her heavens. Every tree and flower and herb soon fill the air with an innumerable dance, yet all in order sweet and lovely. Men are sick with love. Such is a vision of the lamentation of Beulah over Ololan. And Milton oft sat up on the couch of death, and oft conversed in vision and dream beatific with the seven angels of the presence. I have turned my back upon these heavens builded on cruelty. My spectre still wandering through them follows my emanation. He hunts her footsteps through the snow and the wintry hail and rain. The idiot reasoner laughs at the man of imagination and from laughter proceeds to murder by undervaluing calumny. Then Hillel, who is Lucifer, replied over the couch of dead, and thus the seven angels instructed him, and thus they conversed. We are not individuals but states, combinations of individuals. We were angels of the Divine Presence and were druids and Anandil, compelled to combine into form by Satan, the specter of Albion, who made himself a god and destroyed the human form divine. But the Divine Humanity and Mercy gave us a human form because we were combined in freedom and holy brotherhood. While those combined by Satan's tyranny first in the blood of war and sacrifice, and next in chains of imprisonment, are shapeless rocks retaining only Satan's mathematic holiness, length, breadth and height, calling the human imagination, which is the divine vision and fruition in which man lived eternally, madness and blasphemy against his own qualities which are servants of humanity, not gods or lords. Distinguish therefore states from individuals in those states. States change, but individual identities never change nor cease. You cannot go to eternal death in that which can never die. Satan and Adam are states created into twenty-seven churches, and thou, O Milton, art a state about to be created, called eternal annihilation that none but the living shall dare to enter. And they shall enter triumphant over death and hell and the grave, states that are not, but are, seem to be. Judge then of thy own self, thy eternal lineaments explore, what is eternal and what changeable, and what annihilable. The imagination is not a state. It is the human existence itself. Affection or love becomes a state when divided from imagination. The memory is a state always, and the reason is a state created to be annihilated in a new ratio created. Whatever can be created can be annihilated. Forms cannot. The oak is cut down by the axe. The lamb falls by the knife, but their forms eternal exist forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Thus they converse with the dead, watching round the couch of death. For God himself enters death's door always with those that enter and lays down in the grave with them, in visions of eternity, till they awake and see Jesus in the linen clothes lying that the females had woven for them, in the gates of their father's house. And the divine voice was heard in the songs of Beulah, saying, When I first married you, I gave you all my whole soul. I thought that you would love my loves and joy in my delights, seeking for pleasures in my pleasures, O daughter of Babylon. Then thou wast lovely, mild and gentle. Now thou art terrible and jealousy and unlovely in my sight, because thou hast cruelly cut off my loves in fury till I have no love left for thee. 
Thy love depends on him thou lovest, and on his dear loves depend thy pleasures, which thou cast cut off by jealousy. Therefore I show my jealousy, and set before you that. Behold, Middleton descended to redeem the female shade from that eternal. Such your lot to be continually redeemed by that and misery of those you love and by annihilation. When the sixfold female perceives that Milton annihilates himself, that seeing all his loves by her cut off, he leaves her also. Entirely abstracting himself from female loves, she shall relent in fear of that. She shall begin to give her maidens to her husband, delighting in his delight, and then and then alone begins a happy female joy, and it is done in Beulah. And thou, O virgin Babylon, mother of whoredoms, shalt bring Jerusalem in thine arms in the night watches, and no longer turning her a wandering harlot in the street, shalt give her into the arms of God, your Lord and husband. Such are the songs of Beulah in the Lamentations of Ololon. And all the songs of Beulah sounded comfortable notes to comfort Ololon's lamentation. For they said, Are you the fiery circle that late drove in fury and fire the eight immortal starry ones down into Uro dark, rending the heavens of Beulah with your thunders and lightnings, and can you thus lament and can you pity and forgive? Is terror changed to pity, O wonder of eternity? And the four states of humanity in its repose will show them. First of Beulah a most pleasant sleep and cautious soft, with mild music, tended by flowers of Beulah, sweet female forms winged or floating in the air spontaneous. The second state is Allah and the third state al Uro. But the fourth state is dreadful. It is named Or Uro. The first state is in the head. The second is in the heart. The third in the loins and seminal vessels. And the fourth in the stomach and intestines terrible, deadly, unutterable, as he whose gates are open in those regions of his body can from those gates view all these wondrous imaginations. But all along sought the or Uro and its fiery gates, and the couches of the martyrs. And many daughters of Beulah accompanied them down to the Uro with soft, melodious tears. A long journey and dark through chaos in the track of Milton's course, to where the contraries of Beulah war beneath negation's banner. Then viewed from Milton's track they see the Uro, a vast polypus of living fibers down into the sea of time and space growing, a self-devouring monstrous human dead twenty-sevenfold. Within it sit five females and the nameless shadowy mother spinning it from their bowels with songs of amorous delight and the melting cadences that lure the slippers of Beulah down the river's torch, which is Arnon, into the Dead Sea. Around this polypus flows continual bills the mundane shell. Four universes round the universe of laws remain chaotic. Four intersecting globes, and the egg formed world of laws in midst, stretching from zenith to nadir, in midst of chaos. One of these ruined universes is to the north named Uthona, one to the south. This was the glorious world of Eurism, one to the east of Luva, one to the west of Tarmas. But when Luva assumed the world of Eurism in the south, all fell towards the center, sinking downward in dire ruin. Here in these chaoses the sons of Ololon took their abode, in chasms of the mundane shell, which open on all sides round southward and by the east within the bridge of Milton's descent, to watch the time. 
beating and gentle to awaken your reason, they stood in a dark land of that, of fiery corroding waters, where lie in evil that the four immortal, pale and cold, and the eternal man, even Albion upon the rock of ages. Seeing Milton's shadow, some daughters of Beulah trembling returned, but all alone remained before the gates of the dead. And all alone looked down into the heavens of Uro in fear. They said, How are the words of man, which in great eternity appear around, in the external spheres of visionary life, here rendered deadly within the life and interior vision? How are the beasts and birds and fishes and plants and minerals here fixed into a frozen bog, subject to decay and death? Those visions of human life and shadows of wisdom and knowledge are here frozen to unexpansive, deadly, destroying terrors and war and haunting. The two fountains of the river of life are become fountains of bitter death and of corroding hell, till brotherhood is changed into a curse and a flattery by differences between ideas, that ideas themselves, which are the divine members, may be slain in offerings for sin. O oh, dreadful loom of that! O oh, piteous female forms compelled to weave the woof of that! On Camberwell, Tirza's courts, Malas on Blackheath, Rahab and Noah dwell on Windsor Heights, where once the carols of Jerusalem spread to Lambeth's Vale, Milka's pillars shine from Harrow to Hampstead, where Hoglag on Highgate's Heights magnificent weaves over trembling Thames to Shooter's Hill, and thence to Blackheath, the Dark Wolf. Loud, loud roll the waves and spindles over the whole earth let down on all sides round to the four quarters of the world, eastward on Europe to Euphrates and Indu, to Nile and back in clouds of that across the Atlantic to America, north and south. So spake Ololon in reminiscence astonished. But they could not behold Golgonusa without passing the polypus, a wondrous journey not possible by immortal feet, and known by the divine Saviour can pass it without annihilation. For Golgonusa cannot be seen till having passed the polypus. It is viewed on all sides round by a fourfold vision, or till you become mortal and vegetable in sexuality. Then you behold its mighty spires and domes of ivory and gold. And all alone examine all the couches of the dead, even of Los and Denitarmon and all the sons of Albion, and his four souls terrified and on the verge of death. In midst of this was Milton's coach, and when they saw eight immortal starry ones, Guarded the couch in flaming fires, they thunderous uttered all a universal groan, falling down, prostrate before the starry aid, asking with tears forgiveness, confessing their crime with humiliation and sorrow. Oh, how the starry aid rejoiced to see all alone descended! And now that a wild road was opened to eternity by all alone's descent through Beulah to Los and Denitarmon. For mighty were the multitudes of Ololon, vast the extent of their great sway, reaching from Uru to eternity, surrounding the mundane shell outside in its caverns, and through Beulah. And all silent forbore to contend with Ololon, for they saw the Lord in the clouds of Ololon. There is a moment in each day that Satan cannot find nor can his watch fiends find it. But the industrious find this moment and it multiply. And when it once is found, it renovates every moment of the day if rightly placed. In this moment all alone descended to Los and then it on, unseen beyond the mundane shell southward in Milton's track. Just in this moment, when the morning odors rise abroad and first from the wild time, stands a fountain in a rock of 
crystal flowing into two streams. One flows through Gorgonusa and through Beulah to Eden beneath Lotus's western wall. The other flows through the aerial void and all the churches meeting again in Gorgonusa beyond Satan's seat. The wild time is Lotus's messenger to Eden. A mighty demon, terrible, deadly and poisonous, his presence in Ulro, dark. Therefore he appears only a small root creeping in grass, covering over the rock of Odos, his bright purple mantle. Beside the pond, above the lark's nest in Gorgonusa, Luva slept here in that, and here is Luva's empty tomb. Olagon sat beside his fountain on the rock of Odos. Just at the place to where the lark mounts is a crystal gate. It is the entrance of the first heaven named Luther. For the lark is Lotus messenger through the twenty-seven churches, that the seven eyes of God who walk even to Satan's seat through all the twenty-seven heavens may not slumber nor sleep. But the lark's nest is at the gate of Los, at the eastern gate of White Golgonusa, and the lark is Los's messenger. When on the highest lift of his light pinions he arrives at that bright gate, another lark meets him, and back to back they touch their pinions, tip tip, and each descend to their respective elves and there all night consult with angels of providence and with the eyes of God all night in slumber and spire. And at the dawn of day send out another lark into another heaven to carry news upon his wings. Thus are the messengers dispatched till they reach the earth again in the east gate of Golgonusa. And the twenty-eighth bright lark met the female Ololon descending into my garden. Thus it appears to mortal eyes and those of the Uro heavens, but not thus to immortals. The lark is a mighty angel, for all of them stepped into the polypus within the mundane shell. They could not step into vegetable worlds without becoming the enemies of humanity, except in a female form. And as one female, all alone and all its mighty hosts appear a virgin of twelve years. Nor time nor space was to the perception of the virgin all alone, but as a flash of lightning, but more quick the virgin in my garden before my cottage stood. For the satanic space is delusion. For when Los joined with me, he took me in his fiery whirlwind. My vegetated portion was hurried from Lambert's shades, he set me down in Felpam's Vale and prepared a beautiful cottage for me that in three years I might write all these visions to display nature's cruel holiness, the deceits of natural religion. Walking in my cottage garden, sudden I beheld the Virgin Ololon and addressed her as a daughter of Beulah. Virgin of Providence, fear not to enter into my cottage. What is thy message to thy friend? What am I now to do? Is it again to plunge into deeper affliction? Behold me ready to obey, by pity thou, my shadow of delight. Enter my cottage, comfort her, for she is sick with fatigue. The virgin answered, Knowest thou of Milton, who descended, driven from eternity? Him I seek. Terrified at my act in great eternity, which thou knowest, I come him to seek. So all alone uttered in words distinct the anxious thought. Mild was the voice, but more distinct than any earthly that Milton's shadow heard in condensing all his fibres into a strength impregnable of majesty and beauty infinite. I saw he was the covering cherub, and within him Satan and Rahab, in an outside which is fallacious. Within, beyond the outline of identity, in the selfhood deadly, 
and he appeared the weaker man of Scandinavia, in whom Jerusalem's children consume in flames among the stars. Descending down into my garden, a human wonder of God reaching from heaven to earth, a cloud in human form, I beheld Milton with astonishment, and in him beheld the monstrous churches of Beulah, the gods of Uro dark, twelve monstrous dishumanized terrors, synagogues of Satan. A double twelve and thrice nine, such their divisions. And these their names and their places within the moon and shell. In Tyre and Sidon I saw Baal and Ashtaroth. In Moab, Shemosh. In Abon, Molik, loud his furnace is rage among the wheels of Og, and pealing loud the cries of the victims of fire. And pale his priestesses enfolded in veils of pestilence, bordered with war, woven in looms of Tyre and Sidon by beautiful Ashtaroth. In Palestine, Dagon, sea monster, worshipped o'er the sea. Tammuz in Lebanon and Rimon in Damascus, Corte in Osiris, Isis, Orus in Egypt, dark their tabernacles on Nile, floating with solemn songs. And on the lakes of Egypt, nightly with a pomp, even till morning break and Osiris appear in the sky. But Belial of Sodom and Gomorrah, Obscure demon of bribes and secret assassinations, not worshipped nor at all, but with the finger on the lips and the back turned to the light, and Saturn, Jove, and Rhea of the isles of the sea remote, these twelve gods are the twelve spectral sons of the druid Albion, and these the names of the twenty seven heavens and their churches Adam, Seth. Inos, Kainan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech. These are giants mighty hermaphroditic. Noah, Shem, Arphasar, Kainan the second, Salah, Heather, Peleg, Reu, Serug, Nahor. Terra, these are the female males, a male within a female, he that's in an ark and curtains. Abraham, Moses, Solomon, Paul, Constantine, Charlemagne, Luther, these seven are the male females, the dragon forms, religion a hidden wall, a dragon dread and hidden hallowed. All these are seen in Milton's shadow, who is the covering carol the spectre of Albion in which the spectre of Luba inhabits, in the Newtonian voice between the substances of creation. For the chaotic voice outside of the stars are measured by the stars, which are the boundaries of kingdoms, provinces and empires of chaos invisible in the vegetable man. The kingdom of Og is the Orion. Sion is in Ophicus. Oh has 27 districts, Sihon's districts 21, from star to star, mountains and valleys, terrible dimensions stretch out, compose the moon and shell, a mighty incrustation of 48 deformed human wonders of the Almighty, with caverns whose remotest bottoms meet again beyond the moon and shell in Golgonusa. But the fires of Los rage in the remotest bottoms of the caves. That none can pass into eternity that way. But all descend to Los, to Bola Hula and Alamanda, and to Entuthum Benithum. The heavens are the Kerov, the twelve gods are Satan, and the forty-eight starry regions are cities of the Levites, the hells of the great polypus. Fourfold, twelve enormity in mighty and mysterious commingling enemy with enemy, woven by reason into sexes from his mantle of years. And Milton, collecting all his fibres into impregnable strength, descended down a paved walk of all kinds of precious stones, out from the eastern sky, 
descending down into my cottage garden, clothed in black, severe and silent, he descended. The spectre of Satan stood upon the roaring sea and beheld Milton within his sleeping humanity. Trembling and shuddering, he stood upon the waves, a twenty-seven-fold mighty demon, gorgeous and beautiful. Loud roared his thunders against Milton. Loud Satan thundered. Loud and dark upon mild Felpam shore. Not daring to touch one fiber, he howled round upon the sea. I also stood in Satan's bosom and beheld his desolations. A ruined man, a ruined building of God not made with hands. Its plains of burning sand, its mountains of marble terrible, its pits and declivities flowing with molten ore and fountains of pitch and nitre, its ruined palaces and cities and mighty works, its furnaces of affliction in which his angels and emanations labor with blackened visages among his stupendous ruins, arches and pyramids and porches, colonnades and domes in which dwells mystery Babylon. Here is her secret place, from hence she comes forth on the churches in delight. Here is her cup filled with its poisons, in these horrid veils, and here her scarlet veil woven in pestilence and war. Here is Jerusalem bound in chains, in the dens of Babylon. In the eastern portion of Satan's universe, Milton stood and said, Satan, my spectre, I know my power thee to annihilate and be a greater in thy place, and be thy tabernacle, a covering for thee to do thy will, till one greater comes and smites me as I smote thee and becomes my covering. So shall the laws of thy false heavens but laws of eternity are not such. No doubt, I come to self-annihilation. Such are the laws of eternity, that each shall mutually annihilate himself for others' good, as I for thee. Thy purpose and the purpose of thy priests and of thy churches is to impress on men the fear of death, to teach trembling and fear, terror, constriction, abject selfishness. Mine is to teach men to despise that and to go on in fearless majesty, annihilating self, laughing to scorn thy laws and terrors, shaking down thy synagogues as webs. I come to discover before heaven and hell the self-righteousness in all his hypocritic turpitude opening to every eye these wonders of Satan's holiness, showing to the earth the idle virtues of the natural heart. And Satan sees, exploring all its selfish natural virtue, and put off in self-annihilation all that is not of God alone. To put off self and all I have ever and ever. Amen. Satan heard, coming in a cloud with trumpets and flaming fire, saying, I am the judge of all, the living and the dead. Fall therefore down and worship me. Submit thy supreme dictate to my eternal will and to my dictate bow. I hold the balances of right and just and mind the sorrow. Seven angels bear my name and in those seven I appear. But I alone am God and I alone in heaven and the earth of all that live there utter this. Others tremble and bow, till all things become one great Satan. In holiness opposed to mercy, and the divine delusion Jesus be no more. Suddenly around Milton on my path, the starry seven burnt terrible. My path became a solid fire, as bright as the clear sun, and Milton silent came down on my path, and there went forth from the starry limbs of the seven forms human, with trumpets innumerable, sounding articulate as the seven spake. 
and I stood in a mighty column of fire, surrounding Felpam's veil, reaching to the mundane shell, saying, Awake, Albion, awake! Reclaim thy reasoning spectre, subdue him to the divine mercy, cast him down into the lake of lows that ever burned with fire, ever and ever. Amen. Let the four us awake from slumbers of six thousand years. Then loud the furnaces of lows were heard, and seen a seven heaven stretching from south to north over the mountains of Albion. Satan heard. Trembling around his body, he encircled it. He trembled with exceeding great trembling and astonishment, howling at the spectre around his body, hungering to devour, but fearing for the pain, for if he touches a vital, his torment is unendurable. Therefore he cannot devour, but howls round it as a lion round his prey continually. Loud Satan thunder, loud and dark upon mild Felpam's shore, coming in a cloud with trumpets and with fiery flame, an awful form eastward from midst of a bright pay the work of precious stones by carolling surrounded. So permitted, lest he should fall apart in his eternal death, to imitate the eternal great humanity divine, surrounded by his cherubim and seraphim in every happy eternity. Beneath sad chaos, thin on his right hand, that on his left, an ancient night spread over all the heaven his mantle of laws. He trembled with exceeding great trembling and astonishment. Then Albion rose up in the night of Beulah on his couch of dread repose, seen by the visionary eye. His face is toward the east, toward Jerusalem's gates, Groaning has sat above his rocks. London and Bath and legions of Edinburgh are the four pillars of his throne. His left foot near London covers the shades of Tyburn. His instep from Windsor to Primrose Hill stretching to Highgate and Holloway. London is between his knees. His basement's fourfold, his right foot stretches to the sea on Dover cliffs his heel on Canterbury's ruins, his right hand covers lofty Wales, his left Scotland, his bosom girt with gold involves York, Edinburgh, Durham and Carlisle, and on the front Bath, Oxford, Cambridge, Norwich. His right elbow leans on the rocks of Erin's land, Ireland, ancient nation. His head bends over London. He sees his embodied spectre trembling before him with exceeding great trembling and fear. He views Jerusalem and Babylon. His tears flow down. He moves his right foot to Cornwall. His left to the rocks of Bonyol. He strove to rise to walk into the deep, but strength failing for Bath and down with dreadful groans he sank upon his couch in moony Beulah. Lows his strong guard walks round beneath the moon. Urizen faints in terror, striving among the brooks of Arnon with Milton's spirit, as a plowman or artificer or shepherd, while in the labours of his calling sends his thought abroad, to labour in the ocean or in the starry heaven. So Milton labelled in chasms of the mundane shell, though here before my cottage meets the starry seven, where the virgin Ololan stood trembling in the porch. Love Satan thunder on the stormy sea, circling Albion's cliffs, in which the full full world resides, the scene in fallacy outside, a fallacy of Satan's churches. Before all along Milton stood and perceived the eternal form of that mild vision. Wondrous were their acts by me unknown, except remotely, and I heard all along say to Milton, I see this strive upon the brooks of Arnon, 
There a dread and awful man I see, Or covered with a mantle of years. I behold laws and jurism, I behold orc and tarmas, the four souls of Albion and thy spirit with them striving in self-annihilation giving thy life to thy enemies. Are those who contemn religion and seek to annihilate it become in their feminine portions the causes and promoters of these religions? How is this thing? This Newtonian phantasm, this Voltaire and Rousseau, this human given and bowling broke, this natural religion, this impossible absurdity, is all along the cause of this? Oh, where shall I hide my face? These tears fall for the little ones, the children of Jerusalem, lest they be annihilated in thy annihilation. No sooner she hath spoke but Ray hath Babylon appear eastward upon the paved walk across Europe and Asia, glorious as the midday sun in Satan's bosom, glowing, a female hidden in a male, religion hidden in war, named moral virtue, cruel twofold monster shining bright, a dragon red and hidden harlot which joined in Patmos so. And all beneath the nations innumerable of Uru appeared, the seven kingdoms of Canaan and five volumes of Philistia, into twelve divided, called after the names of Israel, as they are in Eden, mountain, river and plain, city and sandy desert intermingled beyond mortal kin. But turning toward all alone in terrible majesty, Milton replied, Obey thou the words of the inspired man. All that can be annihilated must be annihilated, that the children of Jerusalem may be saved from slavery. There is a negation, and there is a contrary. The negation must be destroyed to redeem the contraries. The negation is a spectre, the reasoning power in man. This is a false body an incrustation over my immortal spirit, a self which must be put off and annihilated always to cleanse the face of my spirit by self-examination, to bathe in the waters of life, to wash off the not-human, I come in self-annihilation and the grandeur of inspiration, to cast off rational demonstration by faith in the Saviour to cast off the rotten racks of memory by inspiration, to cast off Bacon, Locke and Newton from Albion's covering, to take off his filthy garments and clothe him with imagination, to cast aside from poetry all that is not inspiration, that it no longer shall dare to mock with the aspersion of madness cast on the inspire by the tame high finisher of paltry blocks, indefinite, or paltry rhymes, or paltry harmonies, who creeps into state government like a caterpillar to destroy, to cast off the idiot questioner who is always questioning but never capable of answering, who sits with a sly grin, silent, plotting when to question, like a thief in a cave, who publishes doubt and calls it knowledge, whose science is despair, whose pretense to knowledge is envy, whose whole science is to destroy the wisdom of ages to gratify ravenous envy that rages round him like a wolf day and night without rest. He smiles with condescension, he talks of benevolence and virtue, and those who act with benevolence and virtue, they murder time and time. These are the destroyers of Jerusalem, these are the murderers of Jesus, who deny the faith and mock at eternal life, who pretend to poetry that they may destroy imagination. By imitation of nature's images drawn from remembrance, these are the sexual garments, the abomination of desolation, hiding the human lineaments, as with an ark and curtains which Jesus rent. 
and now shall wholly purge away with fire till generation is swallowed up in regeneration. Then trembled the virgin Ololon and replied in clouds of despair, Is this her feminine portion, the sixfold Miltonic female? Terribly this portion trembles before thee, O oh, awful man! Although our human power can sustain the severe contentions of friendship, our sexual cannot, but flies into the Uru. Hence arose all our terrors in eternity, and now remembrance returns upon us. Are we contraries, O oh Milton, thou and I, O oh immortal? How were we left to war the wars of that? Is this the void outside of existence, which if entered into becomes a womb? And is this the dead couch of Albion? Thou goest to eternal death, and all must go with thee. So saying, the virgin divided the sixfold, and with a shriek dolorous that ran through all creation, a double sixfold wonder. Away from all alone she divided and fled into the depths of Milton's shadow as a dove upon the stormy sea. Then, as a moony arc, Ololon descended to Felpam's vale in clouds of blood, in streams of gore, with dreadful thunderings, into the fires of intellect that rejoice in Felpam's vale, around the starry eight. With one accord the starry eight became one man, Jesus the Saviour, wonderful. Round his limbs the clouds of all along folded as a garment dipped in blood, written within and without in woven letters. And the writing gives the divine revelation in the literal expression. A garment of wool. I heard it named the wolf of six thousand years. And I beheld the twenty-four cities of Albion arise upon their thrones to judge the nations of the earth and the immortal four in whom the twenty-four appear fourfold arose around Albion's body. Jesus wept and walked forth from Felpham's veil clothed in clouds of blood to enter into Albion's bosom, the bosom of death, and the four surrounded him in the column of fire in Felpham's veil. Then to their mouths the four applied their four trumpets and then sounded to the four winds. Terror struck in the veil. I stood at that immortal sound. My bones trembled. I fell outstretched upon the path a moment, and my soul returned into its mortal state, to resurrection and judgment in the vegetable body. And my sweet shadow of delight stood trembling by my side. Immediately the lark mounted with a loud trill from Felpham's veil, and a wild time from Wimbledon's green and in purple hills, and lows and an eternal rose over the hills of Surrey, their clouds roll over London with a south wind. Soft Uthun pants in the vales of Lambeth, weeping o'er her human harvest. Lowth listens to the cry of the poor man, his cloud over London in volume terrific. Low bended in anger. Rintra and Palamabram view the human harvest beneath their wine presses and barns stand open. The ovens are prepared, the wagons ready. Terrific lions and tigers sport and play. All animals upon the earth are prepared in all their strength to go forth to the great harvest and vintage of the nations. End of Milton, 